I'm Dan Edmonds and that is a 2020 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. I used to tune suspensions for a living and now I like to take a look at what manufacturers are up to. So come along with me as I pull the wheels off and take a look at what they've done. But before we do that, remember to click subscribe. Check it out. What we have here is a double wishbone suspension. You can see the upper wishbone right here, the lower one we'll see in a little bit, and a coilover spring shock assembly. And man, look at that. This TRD Pro has special TRD calibrated springs and Fox remote reservoir internal bypass shocks, which we'll see a little bit closer in the next shot. Also, you can see big brakes here, five lugs, and yeah let's get in closer i think i need to turn the wheel so we can see some of this better because the brake's kind of hiding it so let me do that well now we can see quite a bit more Here's the stabilizer bar, and you can see that it connects directly to the lower control arm with this little link. The steering operates on the front, ahead of the axle, which is common when you have a longitudinally mounted engine. Big ventilated rotors, but we still can't see all the shock, so I'm gonna have to do a pan so you can see the whole thing. But what's important to notice is this is the remote reservoir right here, and it connects through a, a hidden passage that's in this bottom piece into the bottom of the shock body itself. And what that does is it, normally a shock like this would have a gas chamber at the bottom and a little piston, and the, the rod would only be able to come down so far. If you want to use the whole length of it for um, maximum travel, what you can do is put a remote reservoir and put the gas chamber here in the little dividing piston in this cylinder. And the second benefit of that is you get more oil. The oil goes all the way into here to about this point in the middle where the, where the dividing piston is. And so that extra oil helps to absorb more heat. And so they'll run cooler. So yeah, that's something you need in a TRD Pro, which is meant to go over whoops and washboard in the desert. One thing you notice right here is the angle of this upper control arm. It really leans down towards the back, and that's a sign that this has a lot of anti-dive geometry that prevents brake dive, or at least tries to minimize it. You can see here that the coil spring has an L, and it lines up with this nub. That is, we're on the left-hand side. If this spring were on the other side, this R would be lined up with the nub over there. So that's to get these things in the right orientation. And as it turns out, the right orientation shows the TRD logo right there. So isn't that handy? The lower control arm has two eccentrics to adjust suspension alignment. There's the one you can see, and then there's one up in here behind the bash plate. This is kind of difficult to manage when you have two eccentrics like this to get the caster and the camber right at the same time. So it's always best to pay somebody with a nice alignment rack and some skills to have that done for you. One of the things I always like to point out is the motion ratio of the various suspension components. The control arm pivots in here and this is the point that moves. This is the ball joint. So when the wheel moves up an inch, so does this. Anything along here moves a slightly smaller amount that's proportional to the distance from here to wherever this is. So what that means is the coilover shock has what looks like a 75% efficiency or 0.75 to 1 motion ratio relative to wheel movement. And the stabilizer bar a little further in is about halfway, so we'll call that 50%, give or take. You know, the closer in it is, the less efficient it is and the bigger this has to be to do the same job. So if it could be moved further out, then this could be smaller and still do the same work. 
but packaging, you got to fit things in, and this is the best way for all this stuff to fit together. Those of you with Toyotas have probably heard it pop or squeak at full lock when you're off-road, and that's because this limit stop for steering is this piece of steel rubbing against this one. No problem, it's just, yeah, it makes a little noise sometimes if you happen to be at full lock and hit a bump. You might hear a pop. Doesn't mean anything. So I've turned the wheel the other way so you can see some of the features that are behind the axle. And one of them right here is the bump stop. You can see where it touches. There's another one in there on the front half so that both legs of the control arm get loaded similarly. These are four piston fixed calipers. You can see one, two, three, four. Pretty easy to uh, see that they're fixed. There's no sliding element. But if you want to take the pads out, you just pull these two pins and you can pull the pads straight out. Now, if you have to change the rotor, well, you got to take the caliper off to do that. But if you just want to change pads, two pins and you're done. Well, you got to put them back in. The tie rod, the little bend here, that's there so that at full lock, the inside lip of the wheel won't hit it. These shocks are pretty trick. They're Fox internal bypass, and we've already seen the remote reservoir. 2.5 inches in diameter, and that's a big piston with a lot of oil to move, which is great because you need that. You need the oil volume to uh, keep these things cool off-road and also to have the control with the damping that you want. And the internal bypass is interesting because it's really a series of holes internally that we can't see. And when it's in the middle, when you're driving on the street, um, all of the holes are open, and so there's a lot of bypass around the valve, and that makes it sh uh, softer. As you get closer and closer to the ends, uh, holes are covered up, and there's less and less bypass, and the shock gets stiffer and stiffer as you get towards full compression, and likewise as you get towards full rebound. So that is really neat because you have a displacement-dependent uh, damping curve, not just a speed-dependent one. Um, so that's something you really need off-road because you want to really not pound uh, into, uh, you know, the, the earth when you land a jump or if you just hit a big bump. You want it to get progressively stiffer as you get closer and closer to the bump stops so you don't crash the bump stops. That takes care of the front. So let's put the wheel back on and head to the back before we lose our light. So here we are at the back and we can see another Fox two and a half inch remote reservoir shock absorber and of course a leaf spring because the only pickup that doesn't have leaf springs right now is the Ram 1500. One thing about the TRD Pro is Toyota didn't want to give up any payload or cargo carrying capacity so this spring pack is pretty much the same one you'll see on vehicles that aren't TRD Pros. This is the main leaf, and you can see it runs pretty much straight towards the bolt here. They call this a Berlin eye. It wraps around and down, and that minimizes toe changes as the spring compresses. This second leaf here has this extension. It doesn't carry any weight, but what it does is it protects all this. If you were to hit a rock against this, it would just absorb the impact without breaking the spring mount. The Tundra has rear shackles that come down from above, some other trucks do it differently. Uh, I think the reason Toyota did that is they wanted to line these springs up directly under the frame rails so they could be pretty far apart. And also that's good for strength because you don't have anything cantilevered off the side of the frame rails. Here's the bump stop. And this is the landing pad that it hits against when you bottom out, if you bottom out. And you will, because it's a truck. 
it's easier to see the rear shock and how it works back here. So we'll go over the uh, dividing piston business again. Normally, in a monotube shock, you would have a gas chamber in the bottom, about where the R is down. So there'd be a piston here, and it'd be oil above here. And this would be the end of the zone that the piston could move up and down. So the effective length of the shock is actually shorter than it looks because of the gas chamber that would have to be here. But when you make a remote reservoir, you can take that dividing piston, you can move it over here and put your gas chamber at the top, extra oil for extra cooling here, and extra length to allow your shock to have more usable length even though you haven't changed the length of the body. Those are two benefits of having a remote reservoir. Pretty standard upper shock mount, the kind we've seen for years. Toyota's really good about protecting the spring and shock mounts here at the back as well. You can see that it's pretty flat all the way out to the center section. That spring plate is really compact and this is tied up against the tire. You can't see it right now because the tire isn't here. But when it is, it's really close, and, well, why don't I just show you the other side? It's tied up against the wheel and tire so that there's no obstructions all the way out to the middle. So if you're straddling rocks on a trail, you only really have to worry about the middle. The rear brakes are a single piston sliding caliper and a nicely ventilated rear rotor. If you want to change the pads back here, you'd remove this bolt pivot this up and pull the pads out. If you need to change the rotor, you just have to take the whole caliper off using two bolts we can't see from this side. Now, this brake caliper isn't very big because it's not the parking brake. There's a drum brake inside here. Here's another view. You can imagine how big the parking brake is in here. Single piston right here for the regular brake. Toyota does an admirable job of getting their spare tires tucked up pretty tight so they don't represent the low point in a departure angle situation. This tire is exactly the same as the other four on the truck, but it's on a steel wheel, not a matching alloy. So when you get a flat, it just won't look the same, but it will be the same performance because it's the same tire. PBS forged alloy wheels, Michelin LTX AT2. These tires are 275-65-R18 tires, and if you do the math on that, 275 times 0.65 times 2 divided by 25.4 plus 18, you get, yes, I'm a nerd, you get 32 inches tall. So these are 32 inches, 32 inch tires, even though they have that other tire size there. Yeah, these are P-metric, not LT tires. Toyota doesn't like the idea of using LT tires uh, for reasons that are only known to them. But the wheels, if I look inside, I can see somewhere, here they are, 18 by eight and a 60 millimeter offset. So if you're looking for something else, that's something you can use as a starting point. But I like the idea of forged alloy wheels, and I think I would keep these. They look pretty good, too. One of the things I like to do is weigh the wheels and tires. I don't know why, I just got into the habit, and now it's kind of my thing. So let's see what we got. Seventy-three point five pounds. Just imagine what that would be if this wasn't a forged alloy wheel. Last thing to do, torque the wheels. 97 pound-feet. That's what they say with aluminum wheels, which isn't as much as you'd think, but that's why it pays to look. Well, that's it. That's the end of this suspension deep dive of the 2020 
Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. I've done a lot of these in written form, but this is my first video edition. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And while you're there, click subscribe.